So the number one question everyone wants to know is, what did that cost, Brumi? Yep, well, stay tuned because we're going to run through that right now. Billions and billions and... So today, Broom, you're going to tell us how much money we've blown on the F truck. Yeah, well, ultimately, uh, if you look online when people build project cars, one of the biggest questions always asked is how much does this cost, how much did that cost, how much did the whole project cost? So that's what we want to do with this EFI video. We've seen lots of people install these years before, even ourselves, but not many people go down to depths of what every single component costs and what you might actually be up for to run through this program. So let's have a bit of a look at that now. All right, so first and most obvious part of a fuel injection conversion is the ECU. Uh, we went with the FuelTech FT550. Total cost there was 39.95 Australian dollars, including GST. Now, went with the FuelTech because this is an F350 and it has, you know, 1976 F350, there's no dash. So I think there's a speedo in the middle that didn't work. Um, there was no gauges for water temp, there's nothing at all. So, you know, we, We've got the engine in it now, but we might put a different engine in it later as well. But I wanted something that would display fuel level accurately, fuel pressure, oil pressure, RPM, all this kind of stuff, uh, flex fuel uh, and, and the Y-band. Mm -hmm. So I would have, you know, when you count it, you think, oh, 3,900, four grand almost basically. Oh, that's a lot of money. You can get other ECUs for two and a half thousand dollars. It'll do the same job. Yes, but think of what also how much it costs them to buy a dash unit for a display unit and suddenly the 39.95 price doesn't seem that high you know otherwise what are the other options buying a two and a half thousand dollar ECU and a two thousand dollar dash or buying a two yeah. and a half thousand dollar ECU and then it all, works out, it all works out about the same you buy all these autometer gauges yeah. that look like a car's built in 1990 and that it's you know we wanted modern styling with an older look as well it's so it's also easy later on at a point you can easily like you've done the 626 you could detach it and put that computer in another car if you had another car with a yeah with a similar loom or yeah and the best part about this this ECU is they do updates all the time so there was a few things that when we first got the ECU uh, it, it hadn't been configured for it hadn't been set up but since then it's all been set up and, and it works fine to that so they're constantly updating stuff different engines so if we want to put say a barra in it say that again a barra in it later on it's a possibility no no that's all programmable, same ECU, don't have to do anything, don't have to send it back to a manufacturer or wait for something to be set up. All we do is load a different tune, bang, barrels up and running, or a LS or whatever engines. LS has never died. Mainly went for that because it's configurability and the dashboard was really important to us too. So next part was uh, the wideband sensor, it's $365. So wideband sensor, although it's not a critical component, you don't have to install it. Uh, when you're tuning your car, it's it's necessary if the, for the dyno operator basically have to put the tune in, but I wanted it there, so peace of mind, I can always keep an eye on the engine because you know I'm the one tuning it as well. So it's just easier to put it in there and leave it in there. It's also like. another, what you just touched on, future-proofing the car, yeah. or the truck, I should say. Later on, you don't have to worry about doing that if we had some boost. Yep, yeah, it's that's all it. There. It's, it's ready to go and all I have to do, if I want to do something on the fly, I'm cruising and we're cruising in Sydney and I can see it might be a bit richer, a bit lean, I can press two buttons on the dash and alter the tune on the fly anyway. So uh, easy to get around with. The sensor that comes, uh, that is $150 just a Bosch. I don't buy a knockoff sensors, buy genuine Bosch always and that. So it's $150 for that sensor. Before we continue, Broomy, these prices are Australian. AU dollars. AU dollars and we have people outside of Australia, we have a 10% goods and service tax. So that is Australian dollars. So we're not going to put up um, conversions you can work that out yourself yeah yeah wherever what country mm. you're in just type in how much is au dollars to whatever country your currency so Including that'll be tax. able to be worked at uh, so of course when installing a fire system you need somehow to get the power around from here and there so we got just a generic sort of little fuse box that was about 60 bucks about a dollar 60 in fuses uh, that's kind of detail we're going to go in here this is the actual costs of building this car not the hidden cost a little bits and pieces that $1. add up that you forget $1. about. $1.60. Have, have you got the cable ties included? Uh, I haven't used cable ties yet. I don't sell it. One cable tie. <laughs> so uh, relays, again, genuine Bosch relays. You don't want to be, you know, save money on some crappy dodgy relays and that. So down at Auto Barn just got some genuine Bosch relays, I think. Uh, now we're $200 all up. And then just generic wiring in one and a half mil, two and a half mil, three and a half, whatever power cable and that's uh, about $200 there as well. So. Uh, got some plugs and connectors 
four car from uh, truck, should say, from Raceworks. They're just all the sensors and stuff. So they're around $200 as well. Uh, and that pretty much takes care of all the EFI sort of stuff. So the wiring, the fuses, the relays and all that. So you can see the total now, how much that's cost just for, I guess, some of the, the sensors and all that kind of thing to, to make the ECU work. Next, we'll start looking at the fuel system. So fuel pump, fuel tank, surge tank and, and the delivery system. So in terms of uh, hose and fittings, you're looking at about $900 out there. Now we used Raceworks braided hose and Teflon rubber and all that, that, that you know, we've seen earlier in this video on that. Of course, you can save money by going through rubber hose and hose clamps and brass fittings or whatever and that, but we had nothing yeah, in this yeah. in this truck. There was that's, nothing. That's so. one area though, that you can try and save money or you can spend a bit more money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so we, we had nothing on this truck, so we were starting from scratch anyway. So if we we're starting from scratch, we just went to, you know, what it actually looked decent and, and works and we know very, very familiar with. So that worked well. Uh, the fuel cell was 499, so that's a Raceworks 76 litre fuel cell. Had the sender unit in it as well and a little sumped area. So that just- But that was because it was on LP gas. It was on so gas, yeah. So, same as the- Your own conversion, you might already have a fuel tank. Yeah, same as the hose and fittings there. We had nothing. So in, in your, your car now, you might be looking at this going, oh, I've already got a fuel tank that's got a, a lift pump in it and some steel hoses already. Well, you don't have to factor those into the cost of your EFI conversion because you've already got that stuff. So next one is um, the surge tank. Dishworks surge tank. It's a billet unit, billet tap. Built, built at everything, so it's a really heavy duty unit. It's 1250 uh, retail, and inside that we put a, a Dishworks DW400 pump. So that future proofs it as well. So if we want to put, if we did put a barrel with rods and pistons in it, we want to make 600 kilowatts or something. That, that's a good point, though. You got to think, what's your end goal? Yeah. Because you might, you know, you do it once, do it right. Like, what is it? A, what's that saying? A poor man, you know, pays. <laughs> a poor man pays twice. Pays twice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but like if you think maybe down the track you're going to power the thing up, you don't need to worry about redoing the fuel system. Hey, yeah. you, might, you might change your injectors. Yeah, yeah. But well, um, even even on that, that, that's I mean, so I can cover those off now. So the injectors are uh, Dishworks 60 pound now, so 600 cc injectors. So even if we want to make, I think that's like 400 kilowatts and E85 with a barra, those injectors will still do it. So I've future proof basically everything. So no matter what engine combo I put on it. We've pretty much got everything there now to do what we need to yeah, do. Yeah. So, yeah, so the fuel pump's about 370, the injector's about 960. Uh, fuel filter was another Dishworks item, cleanable stainless steel element, uh, that's $200. And the Turbo Smart fuel pressure regulator was $300. So, we've run the Turbo Smart uh, FPR 2000s in pretty much every car we've sort of done so far and yeah, always been yeah. reliable. So, get a lot of people asking, you know, where they can save money. In my opinion, fuel pumps and fuel pressure regulators, they're critical components that if they fail, they will leave you stranded somewhere. So I always like to make sure I buy a known brand, so there's a known quantity there for something like that. So they're always great. Um, in terms of the air system, so that's the fuel system. So we've had all the wiring and the electronics, we've got the fuel system and fuel delivery. In terms of then getting air into the engine, obviously because previously it had just had a carby or an LPG throttle body plate on it, we need a different delivery system to get fuel, fuel injected and fuel injectors on there. So uh, I had an injector plate, which is cost $300, which is that plate that the eight injectors run into. That's $299, uh, 90 degree elbow uh, that sits on top of that plate. That was uh, $200. And then a thousand, um, I think it's 100 millimetre, maybe like 1,000 CFM throttle body that's 299 now. All that stuff I previously bought for our 626, so it was just lying around. So I didn't, you know, why would I go and buy something different when I've got that, those components lying around? So there's definitely different options there. You can buy the normal quad sort of throttle yeah, body yeah. setup that you can just drop on. Then you can put a 14 inch air cleaner on top that looks more factory. So a lot of people do that. Uh, but I had this stuff lying around, so I just, I just used what I had because why bother spending money twice when I didn't have to sort of thing. So uh, on top of that also, we got a BMC pot air filter from Premier Auto Trade, which is $79, which um, you can see now. Now, in terms of that the ECU now gives you the ability to, to do things like controlling thermo fans or fuel pumps or things like that, we went with a Davies Craig 16-inch uh, thermo fan. That meant that you know we could get rid of the old clutch fan, and it's a one of those bonuses, I guess, of of yeah. going to EFI that you know you've got a you've got a system now where you can turn a fan on and off at a set temperature instead of just having it come on and stay on all the time. So you can control that with the added demand on the electrical systems. Yeah, you've got you know you've got your bigger fuel, two bigger fuel pumps. 
you've got your thermofan, your ECU, your injectors, and all this. Uh, the factory alternator, and that's 40 amp. Now, uh, <laughs> when, you've, when you're running it at night and it's yeah. got lights all the way down the tray, you got your brake lights, you got your headlights drawing current, and you've got all this stuff. 40 amp just doesn't cut it anymore. Um, so we got a bolt-on uh, Cleveland Genuine Bosch alternator. Um, you can just go down to Autobahn or Burson's or whatever and get those. It was three hundred and forty dollars. Um, what was that? It was one of my fuel drums trying to blow us up here. So, um, so yeah, the, the Genuine Cleveland uh, seventy amp alternator bolt straight on Clevo. You don't have to do anything. Just bolt straight on. Perfect. And then some of the things here are, I guess, requirements if you want to data log, but mm -hmm. they're probably not a requirement to make it run. The only other requirement yeah. to make it run is the Chinese distributor that we put in things. So we had quality components everywhere else, but I was looking for a budget distributor, I guess, just a magnetic distributor. Where did you say that came from? So China. <laughs> so uh, that was only $130. You get like a ice ignition yeah. billet one or an MSD one about mm. 700, they're about six, $700. Now, mm. The magnetic sensor, all it is, is basically a, a steel ring with a magnet going around it, picking up a signal. So I didn't see the requirement to spend bulk money there because I'm not sure how long this engine's gonna be in the car. Yeah, so I didn't wanna point. spend $800 on something that you know we only use for a couple yeah. of months or whatever. So I know this one, again, where I was saying quality components that might leave you stranded. I think that one will do the job just fine. So I've got that. I then used the Raceworks LS3 based um, ignition coil, which was $99, which was great because I didn't need the 6AL box or an ignition box. It was, it's a built-in igniter and it works fine. So that cleaned up the engine bay as well too, because there's no extra igniter or anything like that to fail. It's all in building the coil. So that's perfect. Then we come to the sort of stuff up. Oh, we've got the TPS for the throttle as well. It's about $60, another sensor, but a few other things. The flex fuel sensor on there is $220. Now, that's not critical. However, because our race cars on E85, what I'm finding is that I always, you know, always want to have too much fuel at the racetrack um, rather than, a, you know, a little run out of fuel and, and be stranded or whatever and can't race because I've got no fuel. Fuel's pretty cheap. It might be like $30 yeah. for 20 litres or whatever. But at the same time, you don't want it sitting in the garage for yeah, two months. Yeah, exactly. So when I'm at the track and I've got 20 litres left over, at the end of the day, bang, I just dump that straight in the F truck now and go on home. So that's what the flex fuel sensor enables me to do is not have 20, 30 litres of stale old fuel that I have to dispose of responsibly somewhere um, because I don't use it. So that'll help me do that. I've got two zero 150 PSI fuel tech pressure sensors on it as well on fuel and oil. And that's just for engine protection and also for the dash. So I can see, you know, I've got a sensor on it now that if oil pressure drops below, say, 20 PSI, it will cut engine RPM to basically 2,000 RPM and flash up a warning on the dash so I know something's wrong. So that $150, whatever it is, sensor could potentially save thousands of dollars in the engine. So they're definitely worth it. Same with the fuel pressure. I'll be able to see if there's a problem with a pump or something like that because it will tell me automatically on the dash. So if you've got a dash, your data logger on that, cheap, cheap insurance to you know really know what's going on with the ECU. Uh, last component, uh, a couple of temp sensors. So mandatory when you're installing an ECU, ECU needs to know the engine temperature and basically air temperature to make the fuel calculations accurate based on you know changes in those. So that's about another sixty dollars. So all up, our grand total is just under twelve thousand um, dollars. But yeah, what you have to realise is that we started with nothing. So a lot yeah. of people may already have a certain amount of wiring in their car, fuses, fuse boxes fuel cell, a pump or whatever and that. So there's a lot of these components here that, that you may already have. So your costs may be drastically reduced. Um, you You've can... also got to work out what you want out of the finished product. I yeah. think that's the most important key factor. So many people build a car and then you'll be like, why did you buy those components? Yep. And they can't even tell you. Yeah, yeah. So you've, I mean, you've got to sort of have your end game sorted out how you want to do it. If you, if you never, ever, never intended on putting boost or changing the engine or anything in that, you could probably do it a little bit cheaper. Yeah, you could probably, I think if going through this with a real budget hat on, I reckon you could do this for about seven grand um, if, you, if you really reduce costs of some components. But then, I mean, that's doing things like running secondhand injectors or yeah. uh, you know a lesser spec, maybe Chinese fuel pump and things like that. So it's, yeah, you might, you might be able to do it but for like $7,000. Um, however, 
that, that five thousand dollars that you've saved from the difference here compared to what you get it at the end product what you might do for seven grand be vastly different so um, we're happy with what we've built here it's what i wanted to build so moving away i guess a little bit from the really cheap yeah, budget yeah. sort of stuff that you know i might have done previously a lot of the six to six stuff and some other cars i've built in in you know in earlier years have been very budget conscious and that but uh, the F truck, I wanted to sort of represent the technology that we have behind full boost and, mm -hmm. and you know, it's some of our great partners that help us with some of the stuff on this. So, yes, I know people are probably screaming right now saying, Come on! how much did you spend on that 12 grand? You probably got all this for free. Well, Ugh! you didn't get it all for free, that's for sure. But we definitely have help from uh, a lot of our sponsors. But, um, yeah, they, they support our channel because, you know, we, we, we help them by telling you right now their products and that. So it's just like if you were to pick up a magazine for off the rack and there's someone's ad in that, it's the same deal, you know? So, you know, we're a, we're a business and yeah, that people wanna, wanna help us, you know, you're obviously looking at this content now and guess what, how much did you pay for it? Nothing. So, you know, horses for courses, you're paying nothing to watch it and we might've got some of these components for free. What's the big deal? We also want the thing to be reliable. Like we're towing, you can be towing it, you know, at all hours of the night, you don't wanna be breaking down with a car on the back, because if yep. it breaks down, it's not like you can just call out a tow truck easily and yeah. get you towed and the race like car. tow truck inception. I need a tow truck to pick my <laughs> tow truck up and I've got a car on the back of it or whatever. So, I mean, the, yeah, the main thing about this is I wanted to be, to build something that, yeah, would be reliable that I could drive up to, you know, Queensland or something for, it, for, for whatever reason, for people that don't know internationally where that is, that's a... 30 hour drive pretty much so it's a it's a long haul um in in that cabin and especially if something's going to go wrong i'd rather it go wrong with the race car at the racetrack than mm. than not get there at all because you know we've had a component failure because we've skimped out on something somewhere along the way so um yeah everyone will build the build their car or truck or whatever to their budget or what what they like and their own personal preferences and this was mine so this is what we've got so that was the second last episode of this F350 project in the whole build series. We've got a few more things to come on the electrical side of the truck that I'm not happy with at the moment. The starter motor is junk. I want an external light of some kind and a switch panel so I can turn it on inside the cabin. The winch has no control over it at the moment. Uh, we've already done the alternator part of it that you've seen today and that. So there's just a few little tidy up things I need to do it and then we'll basically do a full reveal on the truck. So that should do us for today and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. And like always, Support the people who support us. Brimmy, when are we doing the um, skid video? The truck doing a skid? Don't think the truck will fucking do it. I've seen a few people asking when it's going on the dyno. Pfft. <laughs>